welcome to subplots lecture. So in this lecture, we'll take a look at two methods for generating subplots. They are subplot to grid and subplot. So there's a trade-off between these two methods. With subplot to grid, more code required, less elegant, and not commonly used. With subplot, less code, more elegant, but more prone to error. And these errors are value error, runtime error, and tight layouts method can cause a runtime error with this particular subplot method. All right, so we'll just take a look at a very simple example here, what we can generate. So I quickly cooked up this output. So you have a bar, heat map, bar horizontal, and line plots, and they're all in one single output. Okay, so by the end of the lecture, we'll be able to make something like this. So what we're gonna do is of course import the matplotlib and numpy modules, and then we're gonna start off with the subplot to grid method before moving on to the subplot method. So I have plt.subplot2, and then we'll have 1, 1, 0, 0, and then plt.show. Okay, so what we have is the largest possible subplot we can have. And what we have inside here is a 1 and a 1, which represents respectively the rows and the columns. And here we have with the zeros, these represent respectively the horizontal and vertical position of the subplot relative to other subplots. But we only have one subplot here. So if we want to have more, what we need to do is increase these numbers here. So one times one is just gonna be one subplot. But if I do, let's say four and four, it's gonna be four times four, which is gonna be 16. So we'd have a potential of 16 of these little subplots here. All right, so let's do another one, subplot two grid, I we'll have four and four, and then zero and one. So we're gonna have another one right next to this one here. And if I want to make this a bit clearer, we use the tight layout method, as you can see here. All right, so I'm just gonna move this to a free and free. So free down and free across. And as you can see, we could potentially have one, two, three more of these little subplots. And similarly, we could have one, two, three of these little subplots here. So a total of 16 we could fill up here. All right, so let's do a few more. So plt.subplots to grids, four, four, and we're gonna do, let's say, three and zero. And this is gonna be directly under this one, but on this position here. So it's gonna be the bottom left, as you can see here. So we've got all this space that we're gonna fill up in a moment. So we'll have another one of, let's say, plt.subplots to grid, four, four, zero, one. And this time I'm gonna have col span equals to three. So essentially what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have on this particular row, but it's going to be this position here, and it's going to be spanning across to here. And that's because we have one, two, three, potential columns that we could have. So as you can see here. All right, so let's just fill this up with a bit more until it's actually completely filled up. So plt.subplots to grids. I'm just gonna scroll down here. And we'll have four, four, and it's going to be, let's say, one, zero, row span equals two. Okay, so we're gonna have another one here and it's going to be going right down here, as you can see. All right, and then we'll just do plt.subplots to grids, move it up there, just to save some space. And this one's going to be two and one. We're gonna have row span equal to two, but also col span equal to two. We're gonna have a very large one right here. Okay. I'm gonna fill up this space here and also this space here. So we'll do plt.subplots to grids, four, four, and we'll have one and three, row span equal to two. So we're gonna have one that is going down here. Okay, and then we'll have just one more. It's gonna be with the cold span. So plt.subplots to grids, four, four, then it's going to be one, one. So it's going to be starting in this position here, and it's going to go across here. So I'm going to use a col span equal to two. 
Okay, great. So let's try something completely different now. But it's going to be with the subplot to grid method. So we're going to create some data. Make some lines here. Then if you are a PC user, hold the control button. If you're a Mac user, hold the command button. We're going to have four lines here. So just left tab four times. Then np.random dot rand int 1, 50, and then 20, and then change the last two here to 40, like so, and then we'll have x equals, y equals, z1 equals, and z2 equals. Okay, so we're going to have a total of four subplots here, but before we do anything else, I'm going to have plt dot tight layout, and then plt dot show. Okay, so I'm going to put my first subplot here, which is just simply plt dot subplots to grids, and we'll have three rows and three columns. So that means we can have a total of nine subplots, but we're only going to have a total of four here. All right, so I'm going to have let's say plt dot plots simply plot x and plt dot title a. All right, so we're going to add three more now. So plt dot subplots to grids. So three, three, and zero, two, plt dots, plots, y, c equals r for reds, and we'll have marker equals s for square, plt dot title, and I'm just going to have b. Nothing exciting there. Okay, now, now I'm going to create a scatter plot, so plt dot subplots to grids, three, three, and I'll have this as... 1, 1 with a call span equal to 2. Okay, then I'm going to have plt dots scatter, so z1, z2, marker equals, let's say, a triangle, then we'll have c for color equals g for green, and s equals 100, and plt dot title equals c. So we'll see what we get. Okay, so we have our scatter plot here. What also you can do is have plt dots grid. What it's going to do is allow us to have a grid overlaid onto our plots, our subplot, as you can see here. It's a little bit small, but you can expand this if you use the plt dot figure. So plt dots figure and I'll do fig size equal to, let's just say six by four, but you can make it bigger if you like, of course. We'll take a look at our output. Okay, it's actually the same size. So I'm gonna make this, let's say eight by six. Okay, so as you can see now, it's a lot clearer. You've got the grid on the scatter plot. All right, so we're gonna make one more, and that's gonna be plt dots subplots to grid as usual, three and three. Then we'll have zero and zero, and then we'll have row span equals two, and then plt dot um, show, and np dot random dot one one hundred forty dot reshape, and we'll have four and ten t for transpose c map equals rainbow, and then plt dot title equals d, and also I will add a color bar in a moment. Just going to run this and see what we get. Okay, great. I'll just put in a color bar. So we should have a vertical color bar around here. As you can see. Okay, great. So hopefully you were able to follow along here. Just go back to show the entire code. So you can take a moment to pause if need be. All right, so we're going to move on from this. And what we're going to do is go on to the subplot method which is as said before at the beginning a little bit more abstract right so we'll start off with plt dot subplots of one comma one comma one and then we'll have plt dot tight layouts and plt dot show run that okay so you can see that we have the largest possible subplots and these three numbers here represent the row the column and the position of the subplot relative to other subplots, but in this case we only have one. And this can also be represented more commonly as just one, 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 without the commas. As you can see, we have the exact same output here. 
Okay, so let's say I want to make this a bit larger. So we'll have a two, four, and one. And then I'll do plt dots, let's say title of bar horizontal. I'm going to be adding some data to these in a moment. And subplots two, four, two. And plt dots title, oh, let's just say bar. Okay, run that. You can see I have my bar horizontal and my bar. So because we have the two and the four here, so the two rows and, and the four columns, two times four is eight. So I can have a total of eight subplots here. And note that the position is at one. It always starts at one and not at zero, unlike with the subplots to grid method. So you can't do a zero, otherwise you get a value error here. Okay, so let's just say I do plt dots subplots of two, four, eight, because I can do a total of eight subplots here. So it's going to be position eight, plt dots title, and I'll have this as just heat map. Run that. And as you can see, I have my heat map here. So you can imagine easily that we have one, two, three, four, five more subplots added, giving a total of eight. And because this is two times four is eight, we can't go and put a nine here. We're going to get a value error. If I scroll down, it says here, value error, num must be one less than or equal to num, and num must be less than or equal to eight, not nine. So the num represents the number nine that we put in for the position of the subplot here. So to remove this error, we'll just put it back to an eight, and it can't be any higher than that. Okay, so as you can imagine, the biggest, of course, is a PLT of subplot 111. So the smallest must be, of course, naturally a 999. Now watch what happens here. I get a runtime error. What's happening is that this particular subplot of the 999 is conflicting with the tight layout method. I'll just scroll down here. So as you can see, what's happening is that they're merging on top of each other here, and we have the little tiniest subplot we can have. So what we need to do is simply remove the or comment out the tight layout. I'm going to reuse that in a moment. So I just run this. And as you can see, the error is gone, but we have this issue with the different sized subplots merging together here. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this one now. And I'm going to uncomment the tight layouts. And let's say I want to have Instead of it being a two by four here, we could have, let's say, a one and two. So plt dots subplots one, two, and I'll do a two here. So what's going to happen is that we're going to have one that has just a subplot that covers these two subplots here, as you can see. Okay, so we could have another one here as well, and that would cover up both the bar horizontal and bar. So the one and two represents that one times two is two, so we can only have two subplots here. And they can only be in two positions. So this position and this position here. All right, so what we're going to do is put in our data. And I'm going to change the positions here. So this is going to be 1, 2, 2. And I'm going to then put in, I'm just going to remove these actually, just to have it start afresh. Then we'll have a bar horizontal, so plt dot bar h. And we'll put in the positions for each of the data points. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2, and 3. And I'm just going to put in some made up data. So 10, 20, 33, and 12. Height equals 0 0.5. And then color equals, let's just say, C or cyan. On that, see what we get. Okay, so we've got our bar horizontal. I'm going to add a, another one. So it's going to be a plt dot subplots of, let's say, 2, 4, 1. This is going to be a bar. It's going to have title, bar, and then plt.bar. And I'll just do 0, 1, and 2 for the positions. And then 120, 140, and 125 for the data points. And a width this time as opposed to a height, so 0 0.7. And I'll put in a color of, let's say, equal to M for Magneta. Run that. OK, so we've got our little bar plot here. Now we're going to put in a line plots so plt dots subplots two four five plt dot title just call this line plot i guess nothing exciting plt dot plots np dot random 
dot brand int 140 and 10 and then onto marker equals let's say as you can probably guess those are my favorites the triangles and G for green okay cool if you do them in a scatter plot it kind of looks like a forest in my opinion anyway all right and then we'll have a heat map here so plt dots subplots one four two this is going to be our last one plt dot title heat map and then plt dots i'm show we'll do mp dot random dot rand int 150 or 20 dot dot reshape 10 to it's going to be a two-dimensional array then, so cmap equals, well, instead of rainbow, we'll have it say, do accent, doesn't really matter, it's just a case of preference, and then plt dots color bar. All right, so I'm just going to run this in a second, and just see what we get for our output. All right, great. I don't really like that color, actually, I'm going to change that to just rainbow. Okay, so that's not too bad. And if I want to increase the size, again, of course, you just go straight to the top and have plt dot figure fig size. I'll do let's say eight by six. So on my screen it should look pretty large, but for you it should be pretty average size-wise. So I run this. Okay, great. So it's a lot clearer here. It's going to run this a few times. So we get. Okay, so that concludes my lecture on subplots. I hope that's been insightful. And I encourage you to check out both the subplots and subplot to grid methods and see which one you prefer. Essentially, you can generate the same outputs. And I hope to see you in the next lecture. Thanks.